on all the attributes of Allah. And let us make sure that we you know, align ourselves, align our thinking with what Allah has prescribed for us to the Quran. So inshallah, we'll continue this journey of learning today. We're going to talk about three more names of Allah. And today we're going to talk about the three names of Al-Sami, Al-Basir, and Al-Hakam. And inshallah, I will try to provide you enough details and enough discussion so that you may reflect on this. I myself have been reflecting on this. So inshallah, hopefully you will benefit from that reflection as well. But before I begin diving into the attributes of Allah, I want to first remind myself and then all of us over here that there's a big difference between the understanding of the names of Allah and then having the real knowledge of the names of Allah. So let me use an example to, to drive this point forward. Let's say you and your friends are, you and your friend is having a conversation and you're having a conversation about ice cream. Summertime, perfect time to have ice cream, right? So you, you're having this conversation and let's assume for a moment that you don't know what ice cream is. Now your friend is probably gonna be shocked at this point that you have no clue what ice cream is. But let's just say you don't know what ice cream is for a moment. And let's say your friend is now past this shock of not, you, you not knowing about what ice cream is. Now, your friend at this point really can do two things. You know, your friend can tell you about what ice cream is using their own words, using what their experience has told them about ice cream, and just try to set that frame and that context for you in your mind so that you understand what ice cream is. The other thing that your friend or that you can do to inform yourself about what ice cream is, you can go to the store and buy some. And that experience is a direct experience that you would have where you now know all the different flavors of the ice cream that might be there in the fridge. You also know what the ice cream would taste like, the different textures and so on and so forth. And I use this analogy to kind of extend, you know, this discussion about the 99 names of Allah. Anytime we're talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the lessons Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want us to learn, it's like this ice cream experience where you don't necessarily know what ice cream is until you actually try what ice cream is. And living our lives in the path that Allah has prescribed for us is kind of like that journey to experiencing what ice cream is like. You know, unless you decide and consciously walk down this path, we don't necessarily know what it means, you know, to, to uh, reflect on the 99 names of Allah. And all of us as people, as human beings, we have some aspect of each of these attributes within us. The question then becomes for us, how do we choose to engage with it? You know, the 99 names of Allah uh, are not just there for us to just look at from a distance, admire, like we would, for example, admire a piece of art. It's truly there for us to reflect on. It's truly there for us to understand and implement it in our own lives. So having that knowledge firsthand, inshallah, is going to be of benefit to us. And hopefully with some of these conversations that we're having, albeit you know, really, really short, will allow you to at least get down that path of the journey. And that uh, alhamdulillah is the best thing we can ask for ourselves is, is that we, we are given that knowledge, we're given that understanding and understanding of these attributes of Allah. And then of course, beyond that understanding of the Quran, understanding of the seerah and the life of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So hopefully uh, you'll be able to take this forward uh, on your own. So um, Al-Sami. So walking down this path, Al-Sami means Allah is all hearing. There's no sound that is hidden from Allah. There is no, uh, even the smallest of whispers is not hidden from Allah. And the root word of this, uh, of root word of Sami is composed of three letters, Sa, Mim, Ain, which has the meaning of to hear, to listen, to pay attention to the meaning of something. Uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, when we supplicate, when we make du'a, we're making that under our breath. You know, we don't say it out loud. We put our hands up and we say du'a under our breath. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can hear that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can hear even the ant crawling on a, a hard surface, like a rock, for example. All of these things are not, are not beyond Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we can find examples of this in the Quran. And one such example we can find is in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 127, when Ibrahim alayhi salam and his son Ismail alayhi salam they're out there, they're building the Kaaba, they're laying the foundation. And as they raise the foundation of the Kaaba, uh, they make this dua, Rabbana taqabbal minna, inna ka anta samiyul alim. Our Lord, accept this from us. You're indeed the all hearing, the all knowing. And as humans, our ability to listen 
is severely limited. We can only hear the sounds that are immediately around us. We're unable to hear any of the sounds from faraway places. We can't even hear whispers when two people are talking to each other. So in that sense, our ability to hear is flawed. However, we can understand the ability of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be all hearing because you know, he comprehends all that is going on in this world. And this is especially an important point that, that I want to connect back to what we were talking about previously with the ice cream example is that in order for us to understand something, you know, we as, as humans, we need to have something that is relatable to us. So to understand that Allah is all hearing, we need to have the sense of hearing. To understand that Allah is all knowledgeable about all things, we need to have the ability to acquire knowledge or to gain knowledge from an experience or to even spread that knowledge forward. So that's the point I wanna make sure we drive home is that everything that we understand about the attributes of Allah or, or in the Quran, it's relatable back to us. So uh, the sense of hearing, for example, helps us understand how Allah can hear all things, which is not just the physical sense of hearing, but it's beyond just that of hearing because Allah is able to um, uh, basically, you know, listening is different, but, but the way we would understand it is, is through the sense of hearing. And that also brings you know, another point to us. If Allah can hear everything we are saying, and we may not comprehend what everybody else is saying, you know, somebody might speak in a different language, we don't necessarily understand that. But you can say the dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any language that you know and that you're comfortable with. So when we think about understanding uh, how do we apply this attribute in our own lives? We also have to understand that, you know, there's there's two ways in, we can, in which we can do that. You know, this brings us to the point of how we speak, because when we say something using our tongues, if we know Allah is all hearing, we need to now become mindful about the words that we use, whether it's amongst us when we're talking uh, privately with with one-on-one -on -one conversations or maybe in a larger group. What we say becomes very important for us because Allah is, is listening to us. And it's also a way for us to receive guidance. So the sense of hearing for us is, is the ability to do, have somebody recite the Quran, hear it. And if we understand the Arabic language, we can then directly benefit from that recitation as well in that moment. You know, in Surah, in Surah Al-Baqarah verse 256, Allah tells us that let there be no compulsion in, re in religion for the truth stands out clearly from falsehood. So whoever renounces false gods and believes in Allah has certainly grasped the firmness, unfailing hand, and Allah is all hearing, all knowing. Um, so continuing on, Allah is also al-basir, the all-seeing. So Allah witnesses all things in a way that nothing is hidden from him. He can see things even if they're hidden beneath the earth. He can see things even if they're hidden in our chest and our hearts as secrets. The ability to, of Allah to see things is not limited to what is visible. And he subhanahu wa ta'ala can see that which is visible and hidden and everything else in between. From a linguistic point of view, the word basir is composed of ba, saad, ra, which means to see, to behold, or to perceive. In the Quran, we're reminded on numerous occasions to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One such instance can be found in Surah Nu when Noah -Salam, was told to warn his people of an impending calamity. And in this moment, Noah -Salam, said to his people, uh, Worship Allah alone, fear him, and obey me. And the warning Noah -Salam, brought to his people was not to scare them of the calamity itself, it was actually to remind them and by extension, all of us, that we should worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we should fear Allah because he is the master of the day of judgment. So while the calamity would have ended the lives of those people in that time, there is another day that we're all waiting for in which we will all be judged for all that we did in this world. And that's the day to which we are all oblivious to when it will happen, when our time of death will happen, when that day of judgment will happen, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. So this is a reminder for us to fear Allah, not so much in the way we would be afraid of say the headmaster coming to us because we didn't do our homework. This is more in the way of what it would be like if you're doing something 
and then you are found doing that thing and it would be embarrassing to you. It is that embarrassment, that kind of fear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us about. You know, do the things that will give you uh, happiness and joy, not just in this world, but also in the hereafter. We do have the choice whether we want to do things uh, that would be pleasing to Allah or that we do things that are displeasing to Allah. But at any rate, do things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased with you. And this is the fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about. And Allah is the all seeing. And when we think we are alone, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching us. And when we think we commit acts of charity and nobody else is looking, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is still watching over us. And when we commit a sin, whether in the darkness of night or in the brightness of day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching over us. When we say one thing and behave in another way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also aware of what we plot with others. And in Surah Ashura, verse 11, we are told, he is the originator of the heavens and the earth. He has made for you spouses from among yourselves and made mates for cattle as well, multiplying you both. There's nothing like him for he alone is the all hearing, all seeing. And our gain in understanding and applying this attribute in our lives can also happen in two ways. One way we benefit is by understanding that the gift of sight allows us to see the creations of Allah in all the marvelous ways. And it also serves as a warning for us you know, to help understand that there's no power greater than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And our sight and our hearing allow us to take in the many wonders in this world, this universe, and the experience of the glory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second way in which we benefit is to become hyper aware, hyper aware of Allah's surveillance of us. Okay, we know this from the Quran in verses 10 through 12 uh, of Surah al infatar Indeed, you are certainly observed by vigilant, honorable angels recording everything. They know whatever you do. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us once again that we are all assigned angels who are taking notes of everything we say and do. And we're all going to be held accountable for our deeds on the day of judgment if we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the last day. Even if we don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the last day, we should be reminded that there is still the day of judgment that will come. And it is our responsibility to know and understand that everything we do is being recorded and will be played back to us when we are held to account in the last day. And this brings me to the last attribute that, that I wanna talk about today. Uh, and that is the attribute of Al-Hakam. Now, the definition of Al-Hakam is the arbitrator, the giver of justice. And there's no ruling from Allah that can be overturned. He's the best judge of all, and his judgment is swift, fair, and final. And linguistically speaking, again, also is the root words for Hakam is Ha, Kaf, Mim, which means to be wise, to know the true nature of things, and to pass judgment. Now, this particular attribute of Allah deserves much, much deeper discussion. Uh, and, and I'm not gonna do the, I'm not gonna do it justice in, in this short amount of time, but I wanna make sure that I, I at least highlight that this is a, an important topic that has you know, much broader discussion points behind it. So for the sake of time, inshallah, you know, just to keep it short, uh, in the future, if we get a chance, you know, I wanna touch on this topic of justice because it is, it is pretty deep from, from uh, you know, when I was looking at it and when I was thinking about it. So we know that Allah tests us with everything in this world. You know, in Surah al kabut verse number two, we are reminded, do people think once they say we believe that they will be left without being put to the test? And being tested is a way for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to correct us, to tell us that you've strayed away, it's time for you to come back to the right path. It's also a way to keep us, you know, safe from things that may not be good for us. You know, we, may, we might want something in this world. We might want certain events to happen and they may not happen and then we might feel disappointed, but it's a way for Allah to say, that may not have been for you. And we should always find patience and, and, patience and gratitude uh, in that. It's also a way for us to strengthen our faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because to have faith in Allah means that we are patient with what we have. We're patient with what uh, transpires in our lives. And we're also working towards making sure that we're always connecting ourselves with Allah. And it's a way for us to wash away our sins. You know, the good times we enjoy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as well as the difficult times, all of these have lessons in us 
uh, lesson them for us. And it is in these times of ease and hardship that we make decisions that are either pleasing to Allah or we can make decisions that are displeasing to Allah. And this brings us back again to the day of judgment when we'll be rewarded for the deeds that we've done well and for the deeds that we have done poorly. And this ties directly to the point of justice. Justice, for justice to exist, an accounting of our deeds is a prerequisite. So for our deeds to be good or bad, there also must be some cause which will affect us and a force that decides one way uh, or that forces us to decide one way or the other. So let me re-say that one more time. For justice to pre-exist, there has to be an accounting of deeds. And for deeds to exist, there has to be some cause and effect and that relationship needs to have some plan. And this is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also the best planner of all. Okay, so we have that ability to choose. We have the ability to say, I will do this instead of that. Okay, and the situations we are put in forces us to make that decision in some capacity. And this is a marvel from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, having that freedom and also having to make that decision and to make sure that whatever decision we're making is in line with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decided for us. And there is no planner better than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all of his tests are a way for us to increase in good deeds or bad deeds. So think about the times when you had to decide based on your feeling or your circumstance. Think about the choices you thought you had in that moment and how you tried to rationalize between them and ultimately doing what you thought was best in that moment. And when you made that decision and acted, do you remember if you praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or do you remember if you asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance? And this ability to choose is left to us. And the consequences of our choice is the judgment we will endure on the day of judgment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best judge of all. Inshallah, we will conclude this khutbah in the second half. I seek forgiveness from Allah for me and for you and to the rest of the Muslims. So ask him for forgiveness. He is the forgiver, the merciful. Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the name of Allah, the exalted and blessings and peace be upon the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear respected brothers and sisters, today I briefly touched on three of the beautiful names of Allah, Al-Sami, Al-Basir, and Al-Hakam. And we seek, with this exercise, we seek to bring ourselves closer to our creator by contemplating about these attributes, applying them in our lives. And by seeking the pleasure of Allah, we are working towards elevating ourselves in this world and the hereafter. And let's remember that this world, like all of Allah's creation, is going to come to an end. Everything. And one day we will find ourselves in front of our creator being judged for our actions. And I will remind myself first and then all of you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all hearing and all knowing. The angels that are assigned to all of us are recording our deeds as we go about our day. And these deeds will be revealed to us on the day of judgment. And there is no doubt about that day. And in Surah Al-Hajj, verse 69, we're told, Allah will judge between you all on judgment day regarding your differences. And the differences Allah is talking about here are the differences in our deeds. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that all of us find ourselves heavy on good deeds and light on bad deeds. I mean, and our success in the hereafter is determined by our deeds. Having the consciousness in this world about the next will help us stay close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and away from shaitan, who is an open and clear enemy to all of us. And as Muslims, we find guidance and glad tidings in the Quran. In verse 110 of Surah Al Imran, we are told, You are the best nation produced as an example for mankind. You enjoin what is right and forbid what is wrong and believe in Allah. And if only the people of the scripture had believed, it would have been better for them. And among them are believers, but most of them are defiantly disobedient. My dear brothers and sisters, let us all strive to stay on the path prescribed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And let us remind one another about the five pillars of Islam and make sure we pray our salah at its prescribed times. And salah is a reminder for us to connect with Allah and be grateful for the opportunity to ask for his mercy and pray for those who are less fortunate than us. And it's also a way for us to disconnect from our worldly affairs for a few minutes 
so that we can orient our minds towards that which is good for us. And my dear brothers and sisters, I hope you find benefit from today's discussion. Let us all pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides our hearts towards him. May we all find the strength inside of us to stay firm on the path of Allah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of our shortcomings for he is the most forgiving and most merciful. Oh Allah, when we stray, please forgive us. Allow us to return back to guidance and the path that you have prescribed for those who have believed in you. Oh Allah, please improve us in character so that we may become better versions of ourselves. And oh Allah, please have mercy upon our parents, pardon their transgressions and their shortcomings. And please have mercy upon us all on the day of judgment and keep us away from the torments of the grave. And oh Allah, please guide the Muslim Ummah closer to and protect us from those who lead us astray intentionally or unintentionally. And please allow us to live a dignified life in this world and the hereafter. And please guard our health, the health of those who we love and the health of those who endeavor to provide care and service to the members of our community who are in need. Rabbana la tuzih khulubana ba'da iz hadaytana wa hablana min ladunka rahma innaka antal wahab. Rabbana atina fid dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina azab al-nar. Rabbana faqfir lana zunubana wa kafir anna sayyatina wa tawafana ma'al abrar. Allahumma innaka afun tuhibbu lafu wa fafu anni. Allahumma innaka afun tuhibbu lafu wa fafu anni. Rabbi rhamhuma kamar rabbayani saghira. Inna allaha ya'muru bil adli wal ihsani wa ita'i zil qurba wa yanha anil fahshai wal mankuri wal baghi. Ya'izzukum la'allakum tazakkaroon. Fazkuruni fazkurkum. Fazkuruni azkurkum. At this time, I'd like to conclude this khutbah and to all of you, I wish a blessed Jum'ah. Ameen. Amir, beta, another beautiful.